Well, it's great to be with you for our weekly devotional, and we're looking at Proverbs chapter 5. And in Proverbs chapter 5, 6, and 7, the writer of Proverbs leans into a part of life where we really need wisdom, but we don't talk about very often, and that is our sexuality, who we are as men and women, as sexual beings. And it's powerful, and if we don't keep a check on our desires, and if we, if we just act on whatever we want to act on, we get into all kinds of trouble. So Proverbs 5, 6, and 7 are, are leaning into that important topic often missed, and just I encourage you to listen with an open heart to see what God wants to say to you. We're going to look at Proverbs 5, verses 3 through 12. Here's how the passage begins. For the lips of the adulterous woman drip honey, and her speech is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is bitter as gall, sharp as a double-edged sword. That's not a protecting sword, that's a cutting sword. Verse 5. Her feet go down to death, her steps lead straight to the grave. She gives no thought to the way of life, her paths wander aimlessly, but she does not know it. Now then, my sons, my children, listen to me. Do not turn aside from what I say. Keep to a path far from her. I, I, I love that warning. Be careful. Keep to a path, path far from her and do not go near the door of her house lest you lose your honor to others and your dignity to one who is cruel. Lest strangers feast on the wealth of your household and your toil enrich the house of another. At the end of your life, you will groan. Your body and flesh are spent. You will say, how I hated discipline. How my heart spurned correction. There's a sense that the person is saying that with despair. Man, I didn't listen to, to, to discipline. I didn't listen to correction. And I've ended up in a very miserable place. As a pastor, I've talked to way too many people and prayed with way too many people who said, man, I didn't have the discipline or take the correction I needed. And I ended up in a huge place of trouble. So some insights from this passage, because all of us made in the image of God, at the very beginning of Genesis, it says we're made in the image of God. In the image of God, he made us male and female. God created us. Our maleness and femaleness are good things. They're wonderful gifts. God delights in them. Our sexuality is a wonderful gift given by the hand of God, but within the boundaries he's given. So we're being warned to be careful of what we do with our maleness and our femaleness and those drives that are, that are so much a part of who we are. And so just a couple of insights from this passage. Uh, the first is that there's all kinds of sexual temptations. The, the picture here is a woman who's trying to seduce this man, and she's an adulteress, and she's, she's kind of enticing him. But the picture really needs to be for us any kind of sexual temptation, whether it's images or visuals or online things or people we've met or that feeling of attraction we have to somebody who we shouldn't be attracted to because they're not our spouse. And whatever's happening where we sense our sexuality kind of wanting to push out of bounds that God has given for us, where we are drawn to misuse this good gift of who we are as men and women. And so here's a few things that we learn from this, this chapter five of Proverbs. Verse three. It talks, we can see that it seems so good. For the lips of an adulterous woman drip honey, her speech is smoother than oil. Oh, it's like honey. It's smooth as oil. Sexual temptation always looks good. It's always enticing. And the enemy whispers, go for it. It's going to be wonderful. And you know what? In many cases, when we, when we take, the, take the bait and we get hooked with those things, at the moment that we're engaged, it may be pleasurable. Some people say, oh, that's horrible. It's not, that's not pleasurable. Sometimes sin is incredibly pleasurable at the moment. So it starts out sweet, but then it goes on and it says it becomes bitter and it cuts and it leads to death and the grave. You want to say, you want to say, listen, boy, Proverbs, be a little bit more clear about this, but look at verses four and five. But in the end, she is bitter as gall, sharp as a double-edged sword. Her feet lead to death, her steps straight to the grave. Cutting, death, not a happy picture. Sexual enticement and temptation looks delicious. When we partake, it may be delicious at the moment, but it, it ends up being bitter. It ends up damaging us. And so, verse 8 says, watch where you go. Keep your path far from her. Do not go near the door of her house. What are those things that entice you, that draw you in? Cut them off. Stop the supply of those things. 
Now, in our world right now, we live in a time where there is a conduit of all kinds of uh, sexual images and temptations that go right into a device in the palm of your hand called a phone. That wasn't the case when, when many people, many of you were young kids, but it's right there. Pray for the next generation growing up with an access to images and ideas that most generations never thought of, and if they did, they had to go to kind of the bad part of town and the seedy little area and, and, and find the sources of this kind of stuff. Man, it's right there in the palm of young people's hands. Pray for the next generation. And then there's a cost. It says in verse 11, at the end of your life you will groan when your flesh and body are spent. You will say, how I hated discipline, how my heart spurned correction. Man, there's a point where you're going to say, what was I thinking? I can't believe where this led me. I led a pastor's group for years in West Michigan. And one of the pastors in that group, man, he loved his wife. He loved his kids. He was a church plant pastor, great guy. I knew him back when he was in high school, and now he's pastoring a church, thriving ministry. He came to our group one day, and he said, uh, you guys got to pray for me. I, I've, I think I've kind of found my soulmate. I think I found my true love, and it's not my wife. And he's got, he's got multiple kids, and, and he's got a wife he loves, and we all, we all challenged him, we talked to them, and he said, I'm thinking about leaving my wife for this other woman. He said, because she's my soulmate. I miss, I, got, I married the wrong person. We challenged him to get some counseling, he did, but after a while he just said, I'm, he, he went for the bait, he went after the enticement. It turns out he was already involved in a physical sexual relationship with this other woman. He wasn't just kind of meeting her and getting to know her, he was, or he'd already dove in deep, you know, headlong into this whole mess. He left his wife, he left his ministry, he left his family for his soulmate. And about six months later, that relationship blew up. And then he found himself alone, estranged from his wife, from his kids. And now his soulmate didn't love him either because so often those things that seem enticing end up bitter. And my heart broke for this guy. My heart broke for him. I, I, I encourage you to search your heart, to search your life, to read Proverbs 5, 6, and 7 and hear God's warning to be careful of those enticements that cross the lines of what God has set for us. God loves that we're men and women. He loves that we have desires. He's made us that way, but therefore within the context of a covenant relationship, in the, in the loving marriage relationship between a man and a woman following Jesus. In that context, our sexuality should be unleashed with beauty. Outside of that, be careful. Lest you get to the end of your life and you groan and say, I didn't hear discipline, I didn't follow correction, and look what a mess I'm in. Lord, I wanna pray for people even right now that are listening to this, that are listening not as a theoretical exercise, but they're saying, that's where I'm at, or maybe they're just about to step into some behavior or pattern. I pray that you would set us all free from those enticements and temptations, whether they're online visual ones, whether they're relationship with a real person, Lord, help us to stay in line with your word and in line with your spirit. I pray this for every one of us, including myself. Lord, so many pastors are enticed and tempted and it ends up costing them so much. They groan at the end of their life and say, I've ended so badly. May we follow you, celebrate who you've made us as men and women, but live within your boundaries, we pray for the sake of Jesus. Amen. We'll see you at Sunday at church. Register for, uh, for on campus, services outdoors, or we'll see you online. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your week.